Students are going back to school. Will they be using ChatGPT more than ever? Toward the end of the last school year, Common Sense Media commissioned a survey by Impact Research to get parents and students' thoughts on AI. The results show that both see programs like ChatGPT as valuable educational tools. Half of students reported having used ChatGPT for school, but only a quarter of parents reported knowing that their child had used it. Teachers too. 38% of students say they have used ChatGPT for a school assignment without permission. And kids' dependence on these tools is growing. A majority of students who have used ChatGPT for school say they are now more likely to use it than search engines like Google. Almost everyone in our survey agreed that generative AI could both greatly benefit the world or cause great harm. The Biden administration is moving fast to shape the AI landscape and learn from past mistakes. As our CEO Jim Steyer said, we missed the window on social media. I am joined by Robbie Torney, the author of our recent position paper on AI and also a former educator. Robbie, parents and students agree that AI has some great potential, but they also think it could cause great harm as well. What do you think are those biggest pros and cons? Thanks, Lorena. Um, I'll start first by saying there are huge opportunities associated with AI and, and with some of the new tools that we're seeing around personalized learning and the development of a really big range of skills, everything from learning a new language to uh, math tutoring to work skills. Um, and there's also potential opportunities for teachers. There are many repetitive tasks that teachers do on a day in and day out basis that take away from the things that teachers are best suited to do. Um, and automating these repetitive tasks is one of the best potential opportunities uh, with AI. On the flip side though, um, there are some big risks and big harms that we talk about in uh, our position paper. First and foremost among these is um, making sure that all schools and all teachers and all learners have access to these new tools. Um, the cost of computation, the cost of running these new models is really, really expensive. And when you see something like that, you start to worry that some schools may have access and other schools might not be able to afford that, um, increasing the digital divide uh, with uh, these opportunities that we were just talking about. There's also a bunch of other concerns. Um, this isn't a comprehensive list. Uh, everything from concerns about bias and fairness related to how these models were trained and how uh, they put out information, concerns about student data privacy, uh, concerns about perpetuating misinformation and disinformation um, at increasingly rapid scales, um, and also concerns about concrete things like mental health harms that, that might be perpetuated by these models. So if I was going to sum it up, I would say there are really big opportunities associated with these tools, um, but educators, parents, and even students need to go in with eyes wide open and be really careful to make sure that they're not inadvertently exposing themselves to risks or uh, harmful information. So it's interesting to think that we weren't even talking about this at this level a year ago. How has AI impacted the education space, the classroom in this really short amount of time that it's been around? I think the first thing that I would want uh, parents and educators to know is that AI tools are not actually new. Um, AI has been around for a really long time and it's been in a lot of products that you and I and probably many of our listeners use every day. This is everything from voice recognition tools, um, things like the Google Assistant, um, noise canceling and Zoom is another application of AI uh, tools. Uh, when you look at social media algorithms on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, um, those algorithms are using AI to personalize content for users. I um, mean, even in schools with personalized learning products, um, AI has been used for a long time. What is different, uh, like you were talking about just now, Lorena, is that we have these new foundation models, these large language models um, and image models that have come out and they're being integrated into a lot of new products. Uh, there's a lot of new things that are coming out right now. And with that, families, educators, and policymakers who are really trying to make sure that we're keeping our kids safe um, are really looking for clear and reasonable guidance about how to use these new tools. There's already been so much action. The White House has met with AI companies. There's been congressional hearings with AI company CEOs. What do you think is next for AI? 
Well, I think we can all acknowledge that as a society, we missed the bus with social media, that there have been a lot of inadvertent harms uh, ranging from individuals all the way up to democratic institutions as a result of, of these technologies not being regulated more closely. And it's really great that this time around that there's been a lot more attention paid um, to these tools, everything from governments uh uh, hearings like the ones you were talking about. So the companies themselves talking about wanting to deploy these technologies in a responsible way. Um, we're really trying to focus on kids safety in this particular uh, range of tools. And in our position paper, we, we lay out some questions that parents and educators should ask and can ask before using AI products. Um, and to meet that need for for transparent, clear information that I was talking about earlier. This fall, we are going to be releasing an AI ratings and review system to give more guidance on uh, particular products ranging from things like ChatGPT to education specific products like Conmigo to help parents and educators make wise decisions about how to use these tools best um, at home and in school settings. We're excited to see those ratings and reviews. They are for sure going to be a great resource. Thanks, Robbie for joining us and thanks to all of you for tuning in. You can find the links to the full results of the poll and Robbie's position paper on AI in the episode description. A reminder that your support helps us bring families and educators the ratings and reviews, recommendations and research needed to make smart media choices. You'll find a link to donate in the episode description and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Until next time.